Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Um, in the previous session, uh, we have derived uh, aggregate demand curve uh, from ISLM model. Uh, in this session, uh, we will continue our discussion using this aggregate demand curve and then see uh, what is going to happen uh, with uh, uh, to the aggregate demand curve uh, when there is uh, increase in government expenditure that means fiscal policy and also due to changes in uh, monetary policy. And subsequently, uh, if we will also discuss some of the related concepts called lags in policy effects. So, before that let me start with the aggregate demand curve. Uh, as you can see that this is the one that we have derived in the previous session that means this is the downward sloping uh, aggregate demand curve uh, when price level changes. So that means this is the demand curve exactly this yd is equal to m north that we have derived in the previous session. So in this case to begin with this assume that the initial equilibrium position uh, is this one that means lm uh, money supply. Uh, is M naught and the price level is uh, P naught. Again, and then you know that if we assume fixed price, when money supply is increased from M naught to money supply is increased to uh, M naught to M one, but the money supply, but the price level remaining constant, then you can say that the curve will be shifting rightwards and the new equilibrium position is going to be uh, B. So, in this case we, when we assume price level is same then actually the aggregate demand curve is going to shift from A to B. So, in this case what we have seen that due to an expansionary monetary policy the aggregate demand curve has shifted from A to B then this, this position that means from Y naught to um, uh, Y epsilon 1. So, this is the increase in aggregate demand right increase in del Y. Then the issue is that at the given price level P naught, at the given price level P naught, the aggregate supply, the firms, the producers of goods and services, uh, they, uh, at this price level you can see that aggregate demand is this much, the, right? This much, this much is aggregate demand is there, del y, del y denoted with here the aggregate demand part, uh, this this much. But you know, at this price, look at the uh, the firms they are not willing to increase output they are not willing to supply uh, this much output the del y uh, del y is the aggregate demand the aggregate demand change in aggregate demand ag change in aggregate demand aggregate demand uh, but uh, this uh, uh, del y it should be also matched this is aggregate demand it also should be matched with uh, aggregate supply but the producers uh, firms they are not uh, willing to change they are they are already at, at equilibrium uh, they are not they are not willing to increase output equivalent to this del y and they will do only at a higher price so then actually the firms they gradually increase the price then the p, p uh, price level will increase from p naught to p1 so then you can say that means they are having an upward sloping uh, supply curve so when we are having fixed price level of P naught at that time the implicit assumption of aggregate supply curve that this y s is a horizontal curve uh, is a horizontal curve a flat curve that is the assumption but uh, in the ISLM model when we relax that assumption and when we make uh, the price level is uh, changing that means this is no more constant it is a flexible price then in this case uh, we are going to see that uh, the aggregate supply curve is uh, upward sloping. So, the Keynesians they later on agree they also derive uh, an upward in the early Keynesian uh, they believed in um, a upward uh, perfectly elastic that means a horizontal uh, aggregate supply curve but later on uh, they revised this one and they agreed with uh, upward sloping and upward sloping aggregate supply curve because here you can see that uh, there is increase in aggregate demand right that uh, del y this much but firms will produce the matching amount they are willing to produce only at the higher price. When the price increase 
that means when the price increase then you can see that uh, this is where, where they are willing to produce that means at a higher price only they are willing to produce more so when there is increase in price level then you can see that when price increase from p0 to p1 then that means the real money supply further decrease right the real money supply uh, decrease that means the ln curve is shifting uh, leftwards so that means the here the p0 what the p1 the price level increase now the money supply the new money supply m1 but uh, this is not changed uh, this remaining same now uh, but the price level has increased this is nothing but the curve is shifting from right to left that means the new equilibrium position is going to be seen that means uh, when price is changing when the price is increasing then we have seen in the previous diagram that uh, the movement will be along the demand curve that means the movement along the demand curve new equilibrium position is going to be seen so that means uh, in the new level of the uh, increase in aggregate demand was this much uh, this much was the ag increase in aggregate demand but actually in, uh, when the price level increase then the the output will be produced the new equilibrium position is going to be here and the actual increase in aggregate output uh, is going to be only this much right so this is the new equilibrium position Similarly, uh, what we have seen in the previous this diagram here is that when there is an increase in uh, money supply, you can see that aggregate demand increase, but when the firm will respond to this increase aggregate demand only by increasing price. So as a result, you can see that when the price will increase, uh, there will be slight decline in aggregate demand as well and there is the firm will be producing output in the corresponding matching amount of output, but at not at the uh, full increase in aggregate demand, but at a lower level. But overall we can see that there is uh, increase in aggregate uh, supply as well. And uh, similarly, when there is uh, increase in uh, government expenditure, here also you can assume the same uh, relationship. Uh, that means, uh, increase in government expenditure and expansionary fiscal policy will shift the aggregate demand curve here. Uh, the equilibrium position will be A to B. But if we assume, and again, uh, what we discussed in the previous slide, firms are willing to meet this additional demand only at a higher price. When the price level increase from P0 to P1, but the money supply remaining constant then you know that ln curve will be shifting leftwards so that means at a flexible price that means we are moving along the uh, uh, demand curve that in the new demand curve you can see the new demand curve we are moving along so this is going to be the new equilibrium uh, output the where at this position this is the new uh, this is the new uh, y aggregate supply uh, equal to finally uh, del uh, y a d so in this uh, diagram and previous diagram we can see that uh, agri increase an in expansionary fiscal policy and an expansionary monetary policy uh, can increase uh, our aggregate demand and as well as aggregate supply in the economy that means if uh, government if an economy at a recessionary stage in the short run uh, monetary and fiscal policy can be used to increase the uh, level of economic activity first uh, the effect will be on aggregate demand then subsequent effect it will be on uh, aggregate supply so that means in short we can see that fiscal and monetary policy can be used to revive uh, economy or economic activity in the short run uh, especially when economy is at recession some more related topics here because since we discussed that uh, by using the diagrams using especially using ISLM uh, we have seen that uh, increase in government expenditure fiscal that the expansionary fiscal policy and expansionary monetary policy is going to uh, benefit economy by increase in aggregate demand and aggregate supply right but the way in graphically it looks like very so simple but in the real world it may not be it's not that much easy and straightforward and smooth so there are several lags in real macroeconomic economy so let's discuss that one by one and then uh, let's comment on the effectiveness of fiscal and monetary policy to increase aggregate demand and aggregate supply 
there are several lags uh, one of the lags uh, is called the information lags because in the isl model assume that policy makers see uh, what's happening in the economy and can instantly alter policy to fix any problem because it was so easy for us to use the ISLM framework uh, to see that okay uh, when increase in government expenditure uh, aggregate demand is going to increase and aggregate supply is also going to increase right uh, so that means assume we can see uh, policy makers can see what's happening in the economy but in the real world uh, this is not true there is information lag for example, a delay between a change in the economy and knowledge of that change. Uh, and especially this monetary policy and fiscal policy, these policies have been used in order to revive the economy, in order to restore equilibrium in the macroeconomy, especially when the economy is at recession. Right, when the economy uh, is at a recessionary stage, uh, in order to revive the economy, these policy tools are used in the short run. Then the question is, how do we know that? Are we in a recession right now? Or are we at present, are we in a recession or not? For example, in the US, it is the Business Cycle Dating Committee within the National Bureau of Economic Research. Uh, it has the responsibility of determining when a recession begins and when it ends. They make the formal announcement about the recession uh, business cycle. Right. So, that means uh, they, they, they also do research based on the data and research in information. They make, uh, they announce that at present economy is going through a uh, recession. But by the time uh, when we come to know whether some maybe there can be a lag, maybe in a recession might have started almost uh, six months back, right? That means already the time is lapsed. So that means the recognition, the information lag, whether what is the current stage where the economy is at. So that means again, uh, how uh, we determine whether the economy is at a tow or at a boom, peak stage, a recession or at a boom. Uh, one of the two, two variables that we use, one is actual uh, output that is the GDP another one is the potential uh, GDP potential output potential output so the macroeconomic goal is to keep output the actual output as close to potential output as possible but the question here is what is potential output again potential output uh, we identify using uh, macroeconomic model using the trend uh, information so, if uh, we are not so clear whether the what is the potential output and what is the potential output in this economy. If you are not so clear, uh, using an expansionary monetary po policy, expansionary policy above potential output uh, will cause inflation. Suppose if the policy makers use contractionary policy when the economy is actually below potential output. If you are not able to clearly understand whether uh, we are below the potential output or above the potential output, it creates uh, unnecessary shock in the economy. For example, without knowing that economy's potential output is below the actual output and if they use contractionary monetary policy, actually at that time it should be the expansionary policy. So in contrast to that, if they use contractionary policy, then it will create unnecessary unemployment. Already in economy is uh, moving towards unemployment and recession, then the, in a contractionary monetary policy if they use, uh, it would further lead to unnecessary unemployment. They actually some of the debate in macroeconomics was that in 1930s during Great Depression, that time the central bank has used contractionary uh, monetary policy instead of an expansionary monetary policy as a debatable issue. Uh, another lag is policy implementation lag. Uh, suppose uh, the economy is at full employment, uh, it is affected by a negative aggregate demand disturbance. Obviously, it reduces equilibrium level of income uh, below full employment. So, there is no advance warning of disturbance. So, no policy action taken in anticipation of its occurrence. So, in this case, suppose there is no policy implementation, uh, there was a lag. Uh, once suppose the, the recognition lag has already happened in the information lag okay that has been addressed but uh, after that uh, the policy implementation lag so if there, there is a delay from the policy makers to respond that means no policy action is taken 
in anticipation of its occurrence. That also can affect uh, the monetary and fiscal policy. So, makers must decide should they respond to the disturbance if they take suppose uh, 5 to 6 months for example. So, in that case 5 to 6 months suppose if they take um, then obviously is going to affect uh, the effectiveness of fiscal and monetary policy. And if so, if they respond, how should they respond? or whether monetary policy or fiscal policy, fiscal policy uh, how much ammo, wh wh what is the magnitude of fiscal policy or matters, even monetary policy also what is the magnitude of the intervention or matters. So, in order to the policy implementation lag that the delay between the time policy maker recognize the need for policy action and when the policy is actually instituted, the policy implementation lag um, we can classify it into two broad category, uh, one is called inside lags and other one is uh, outside lags. So, policy making is a process, it takes time to recognize and implement policy action and takes time for an action to work its way through the economy. So, each step involves delay or lags that one is uh, inside lags and the other one is outside lags. So, let us discuss one by one uh, these lags. So, coming to the inside lags. Uh, one is called uh, recognition lags that means the time period it takes to undertake a policy action right. So, the time suppose if there is the lag is negative the disturbance is predicted and appropriate action is considered before it occurs then is fine, but mostly there is positive lag. So, that means period that elapses between the time a disturbance occurs and time the policy makers recognize that action is required. So, lags typically is positive. So, that affect uh, by the time economy will be already at a recessionary stage uh, then it will be it will not make the policy will not make much impact. And second uh, in say lag is called decision lag, uh, once they recognize the problem then the decision the delay between the recognition of the need for action and the policy decision. This is another a lag was called the inside lag that is called decision lag. It actually differs between monetary and fiscal policy. For example, in the US fiscal policy it, uh, it has several large implementation lag because policy must be formulated and legislation passed by Congress and signed by the president. In contrast to this you know monetary policy is mainly done by the FOMC, they meet 8 times in a year uh, so that in a emergency they meet immediately. So that uh, they have much shorter implementation lag because uh, uh, FOMC decides monetary policy and implements is immediately. Similarly, in India the RBI the monetary policy committee decide uh, the monetary policy. So, there is the inside like the decision lag is much less when it comes to monetary policy as compared to fiscal policy. Uh, then comes action lag, the lag between policy decision and its implementation it also differs between monetary and fiscal policy because monetary policy makes typically act immediately, but fiscal policy actions are less rapid. Then comes the uh, after this inside lag, another lag is called outside lag. Uh, outside lag is more theoretical in fact, because the thing is that the time it takes a policy measures to work its way through the economy. That means, inside lags are discrete, but outside lags are typically distributed lags. For example, once a policy action has been taken, its effects on the economy are spread out over time. So, the immediate impacts may be small, but other effects uh, occur later. So, let us look at in the case of uh, monetary and fiscal policy. In the case of monetary policy, the outside lag initially impacts investment while uh, interest rate not directly income. So, you we have seen the, uh, the when there is an expansionary monetary policy it, it would create uh, portfolio disequilibrium in the say, uh, among the households and as a result there will be uh, decrease uh, in the rate of interest and as a result there is increase in investment then finally is going to impact then is going to impact uh, aggregate demand right. So, that means aggregate demand ultimately affected uh, through changes in interest rate um, and changes in investment. So, that means there is a delay, but when it comes to fiscal policy though there is uh, less inside lag, uh, there are lots of inside lags, but the outside lag is very less because uh, we have seen that fiscal policy directly impact aggregate demand. So, outside lag is less when it comes to uh, fiscal policy. So, we have seen that uh, monetary policy there are more outside lag because uh, the channel the transmission mechanism uh, through which it affects uh, it takes uh, 
um, a long time. For example, Friedman, uh, the Nobel Prize winner and the uh, well-known econ monetarist economist, to his statement I am quoting here, that changes in money supply will have a strong effect on income, but there is a lag with the bulk of the effect occurring only after 6 to 18 months. Uh, so, right. So, at the same time, um, again, uh, th this actually the predict size and all it is very difficult to predict as well because Friedman and other monetarists believe that we do not know enough uh, about the economy, uh, how it works. So, about the fiscal policy, uh, its impact is direct, uh, that means it is directly affects, so there is shorter uh, outside lags than monetary policy. Similarly, also concern is there, there is uh, expectations and reactions in the economy. So, that uh, not only that uh, the policy makers, once the policy makers uh, uh, address the inside lag, uh, uh, inside the inside lags and come up with the fiscal or monetary policy. So, in addition, there are uh, we, we clearly policy makers do not know what expectation firms and consumers have. Maybe if they come up with an expansionary monetary policy, by the time already suppose what if uh, firms and consumers already anticipated that there is a expansionary monetary policy is coming. So, in the using the rational expectation, we have seen that economy might have already adjusted to that. Then this policy effect is not going to make any impact. And clearly, government government doesn't know the true model of the economy. So, they most often work with the econometric models of the economy in estimating the effects of policy changes. So. A really economic model is a statistical description of the economy that means only some part of it. And similarly, there is uncertainty, policy makers can go wrong in using active stabilization policy due to uncertainty about the expectation of firms and consumers, uh, difficulty in forecasting disturbance, lack of knowledge of the true nature of economy. And there is in macroeconomy, there is huge debate uh, uh, between different schools of economic thought and differential policy impact. So, in this way, uh, the group led by Milton Friedman, uh, monetarists, they believe that there should be a rule based uh, monetary policy, not uh, responding as according to the crisis. Instead, there should be, for example, uh, Friedman advocated for a simple monetary rule that the constant uh, rate rule. That means, uh, money supply should be when the economy is growing, suppose GDP is growing uh, in an economy, for example, 5 percentage. Uh, the money supply also should be growing, uh, should be growing by uh, 5 percent, that means constant rate uh, rule. Uh, in contrast to this, uh, that means uh, they are actually uh, suggesting that there should be confined to them by making money supply grow at a constant rate, not responding to uh, recession and boom. That actually Milton Friedman is uh, not suggesting for that, he is uh, supporting for a rule base. But Keynesians, they suggest that uh, because this uh, monetary and fiscal policy, they mainly support this one for a show as a short run policy to revive the economy. They use, uh, suggest it to use it as an activist policy or discretionary policy. So, in determining how policy makers should operate, policy makers must answer several questions. Should policy makers actively try to offset shock? If yes, should response should responses be pre committed to specific rules that means uh, rule based or discretionary or activist based? or should policy makers work on a case by case basis. So, in addition to the factors that we discussed, there are some other factors as well that also affect the effectiveness of monetary and fiscal policy. One of it is for example, the banks reluctant to sell. So, we have seen that if there is an expansionary monetary policy, suppose that when increase in uh, money supply, when central bank come up with suppose central bank come up with an open market operations and thereby increasing uh, liquidity with the banking system uh, with the banks suppose uh, the liquid then as a result banks uh, liquidity increases. Uh, so, what we can see that uh, as a result when the banks liquidity increases and then the expected uh, further uh, transmission is that banks will be lending this money in the economy. Banks will be bank is the channel who is injecting uh, this money into the economy. But what happened because we have seen we have discussed in the previous sessions that the default risk uh, this is another issue with the mo most banks uh, because of the uh, riskiness uh, of the borrowers even in the their, their liquidity has increased. 
or even they are getting cheap credit from the banks, the central bank, uh, there is no necessary that they will lend to the uh, economy. That means another situation in which monetary policy is powerless to alter the economy is that reluctance of the banks to lend to the uh, general public and to the firms. So that means it will break down the monetary transmission uh, mechanism. So despite lower interest rates and increased demand for investment, banks may be unwilling to make loans, loans necessary for the investment purchases. So, because if they have lots of NPA, for example, if banks made uh, prior bad loans that are not repaid, so they may become reluctant to make more and more uh, uh, loans despite there is increase in demand. So, if the uh, risk level is very high in the economy, if they anticipate high default risk in the economy, so they prefer, banks prefer uh, not to lend uh, the additional money. So then they will be putting their money, for example, if they get uh, more money, the liquidity increases, they will be, for example, putting this money uh, in the, uh, investing their money in the government security, etc. They will not be lending uh, in the economy. So in addition to that, there are some other factors, the soundness of economic and political institutions and systems in the economy. That also affects the policy effectiveness. Uh, when because the, the transmission channels that we had discussed in the say, pre this session and previous sessions, uh, we have seen that, that the expansionary monetary policy or expansionary fiscal policy, uh, finally for example expansionary monetary policy we have seen that uh, when there is uh, increase in money supply, the rate of interest decrease, uh, then the cost of production for the um, uh, firms decrease because uh, uh, rate of interest decrease means nothing but uh, decrease in the cost of uh, borrowing fund right so that because of the decrease in cost of borrowing cost of production decrease but it's not necessary that the firms will be able to respond adequately appropriately it also depends upon their managerial and technical skill as well as other support that they are getting from the other economic and political institutions that means uh, the support from uh, policy makers, uh, the institutions, the economic institutions and political institutions, legal institutions in the country, all this sub should support for them to expand their production investment. So that it also depends a uh, overall economic systems, uh, a soundness as well as managerial and technical skills of the firm because they need to acquire new machines and plants. Uh, so that means there should be timely availability of skilled labor as well as well if they want to expand the, uh, their production process. So in short, what we have discussed uh, in this session uh, was that actually uh, there are uh, several lags in the economy where we discussed uh, coming mainly with the inside lags and uh, outside lag. Then we discussed this one related this one with the monetary and fiscal policy. Then we saw that uh, uh, there is a variation uh, when it comes to uh, uh, inside and outside lag in the case of fiscal and monetary policy. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, uh, see you in the next session.